Hi, Cy here from Music Radar. I'm joined once again by Cy Trust, future music editor. Hi. Um, today we're going to check out the Eventide H9. Yes. More specifically, how you can incorporate it in your studio and how amazing it really is. And it can just do cool, crazy things to things like this, things like that, and other instruments you've got around the place? Yeah, so like really quick introduction. So basically the H9 is, um, it's pedal from Eventide. Eventide, if you don't know them, are an American company. They've been making uh, like digital effects since the mid 70s. Yeah, they were at the forefront forever. of digital effects. Anyway, fast forward 30 years, um, after years of making kind of these rack effects, they are also these days known for a few plugins and also um, stomp boxes, which have kind of found their place into the guitar world. Yeah. And so the H9 is kind of like a bridge between those two worlds. Everything's just come in and it's all in there. So yeah, as you can see, Amazingly. it's a stomp box, uh, but what it is is basically a um, house for all these algorithms. So mm. it's like a best of of everything that Eventide have ever done yeah, technology yeah. wise. Yeah. Uh, so hardware wise, take a very quick look. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, stereo pair of ins and, and stereo pair of outs on the back. Yes. We've got MIDI on the side. We've got a micro, uh, mini USB. Not micro. Um, not micro, which no. we can use to connect to a computer. It's also Bluetooth equipped. Yes. Um, so we can connect it up to a mobile device or a um, uh, laptop, laptop or yeah. a desktop device or whatever. Yeah. Um, the reason we can do that is because there's something called the H9 Control app. Mm -hmm. which is on um, iOS, it's on Android, it's on Mac, uh, so you can control yeah. it from, it's on the PC as well. Yeah, exactly. uh, so you can basically control um, what's going on in the pedal from all these different devices. Obviously you can also control it from the top here, we've got a few controls, mm -hmm. we've got tap tempo um, and just your kind of active and bypass switch yeah. for when you're using it with your foot or hand in the studio. Got this big hot knob which we can um, use to scroll through parameters, it's also sort of a macro control, and then we've got these parameter controls along the top. Um, the controls along here, they work in two different ways. There's the um, the standard way where you just press one and it gives you top level control over um, a few kind of key parameters yeah, of each yeah, sound. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Stuff and you then want straight away. They can hold yeah. it down and go into pro mode, okay. um, which lets you go dive in deep and control yeah. all of your parameters from these um So effectively you, you can kind of control it without the the kind of the user interfaces from the, the apps and stuff. But, but there's two ways we can get it working. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's a really flexible tool. Um, Obviously, it's a stomp box, so it's great for guitarists, but it's also a really killer thing to use in the studio. Quick little word on what's going on inside in the H9 here. Yeah. You can see what we've got is loads of different algorithms. Um, there's different ways that you can uh, buy and configure the H9. So from um, a uh, cheaper core version, which basically bring, gives you a few of the um, sort of core uh, algorithms yeah. and um, the a smaller bits. selection preset, yeah. right yeah. up to the the maxed out version, which gives you um, every, pretty much everything that yeah. Eventide's ever done, and this whole uh, raft of crazy and brilliant effects. Yeah, okay. Um, we've got that running on here. Right, so let's take a look at a little sound. We've so, got everything, right? so first thing first, let's just listen to what we've got going on okay. from the uh, Mini Brute 2S here. So, so this we've is the got... Dry, so this is the dry signal, right? Dry here. signal. A little... Pretty standard little um, slightly acidy bass line. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Nice little bass synth thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, use the H9 to get a bit creative with this. So first things first, we're going to go with um, a pitch factor algorithm, which basically means um, we're getting some cool delay and pitch shifting things okay, going on. Cool. Yeah. So we are going to go. Let's just stop our little bass line here, and we're going to go with. This dark echoes preset. Right. Let's go. Go turn tap tempo on, and we can use tap tempo here okay. in the app, yeah. or we could be using it on, on, on the actual on pedal the itself. Buttons, yeah. And now let's activate this, and we can get these cool, crazy. Okay, so delays this is, going on. Is this, is this the sort of morph? Yeah, so what we're doing here is we're morphing using the controls yeah. in the control app here. Okay. We could also morph using the hot knob parameters here. All right, so you can have so if you see, nice tactile, you I can yeah turn it on the uh, pedal here. Nice. And we're um, controlling the feedback and mix all at the same time as it's called sort uh -huh. of a macro control thing. Mm -hmm. And getting creative and playing around with the sound of our bass line. Okay. I'm really bringing it to life with some cool pitch shifting yeah, yeah, effects. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's take a look at some other sounds we can make. Okay. 
Okay, so we've switched algorithms now. We're on possibly my favourite one, the space. Love this. Yeah, um, so so you'll notice that the uh, the look of the control app has changed a little bit. Um, yeah. As we mentioned, what's going on inside the H9 is basically you've got all these algorithms that um, a lot of them are coming from um, Eventide's sort of back catalogue of um, hardware effects. So this is uh, a sound that uh, was previously contained in their space yeah. stomp box. Mm -hmm. um, we've got kind of all of their classic stomp box and their rack studio gear and yeah. some extra stuff um, that we can access in this pedal. So you've got hundreds and thousands of pounds yeah. worth of studio Great. gear basically in this one little box. But yeah, so uh, this is from the space pedal. It's a cool sort of modulated reverb delay thing, yeah, uh, which yeah. we're going to use to just bring the dry sound of this bass line. So we'll remind ourselves life. what that sounds like. Dry. So again, a little dry sound there. And let's activate this. So yeah, so space is right, so you're bringing this yeah, kind of that's right. really big sound. So what have you got sort of logged in on the old uh, morphing function there? So yeah, again, so we can morph either using our hot knob here and we can, uh, with this sound we're using, we've basically got some, yeah, some kind of chorus and flangey stuff coming in really kind of setting off those high frequencies. Yeah, nice. Works really nicely with our yeah. bit on here. Sing. That's nice. And yeah, we're using this unsynced at the moment because we want that kind of cool unsynced yeah, delay yeah, sound. Yeah. And but again, thing, yeah, yeah, we've got tap tempo and we can, and, can and just, yeah, kind of sync that up and again, Mess with it. And again, we're kind of modulating it. I'm using the uh, Mac control here, but we've got a hot knob. It's worth saying as well, we could also hook an expression pedal into the H9. Yeah, so if yeah. I wanted to just uh, be doing this, yeah, using an express pedal in hand or something under the, yeah, like, yeah, if yeah. I wanted to, you know, tweak the controls on the um, mini fruit and use my foot to yeah. control that, that well. we can do that with an expression pedal. Oh, so. Really? so live, indispensable. So nice yeah. Tail. Nice tail. Great. Lovely little sound. Let's take a look at one more. One more. Go on then. Okay, still sticking with space, but we've moved on to another preset. Yeah, so we're using a Black Hole, which is, um, I really love this sound for it basically can turn anything into a like massive ambient yeah. soundscape. And That's lovely. yeah, I'm a big fan of doing that. So what we're going to do, just let's have the dry sound. Dry sound again. I'm going to engage this. What I want you to do is just play around with that filter. Just sort of, you know, bring it down and yeah, we're just okay. going to build right. this into a big wash. So. Okay. So yeah, you can just hear that really big cavernous reverb we've got going on here. I kind of add some extra modulation. We can bring the mix up on here as well. And we're just getting that really big building. Yeah. Listen to that. Far out, man. Yeah, you gotta love a you gotta love a big long reverb oh, tail. Just, yeah. You gotta love a big long reverb tail. It's so satisfying. Like, yeah. Just, just, yeah. Oh, so good, so good. Listen to the ambience on that. Yeah. So, <laughs> brilliant. Cool. All right. All right. Let's take a look at um, some other uses using a drum machine. Right. We're gonna get the old uh, TR8 on this bad boy now. Okay. Let's switch them over. So slightly different setup. Just to um, quickly update on that. So the first um, when we were using the mini brew. That, yeah, obviously that's a yep. mono synth, so we're going mono into the H9 and then yep. stereo out. Now we've got stereo outputs, so we're going stereo out of the um, TR8 into the H9, okay. stereo into our audio interface. Okay. Um, so just, you know, an, as an example of some different ways we can set it up. Yep. So we've got a kind of classic uh, drum machine groove coming to the TR8 here. Yep. Again, let's listen dry. Beautifully programmed. Yep, just nice little classic. XOX style drum groove. And we're going over to now the mod factor algorithm. Yeah, so first things first, we're gonna apply a couple of effects just to the whole of that groove and just yeah. see how we can just like mess around with our, okay. our yeah. drum groove. So what we've got is um, we've got a chorus effect that we've just tweaked a little bit. So what we're gonna do with these first couple of sounds is just look at ways we can process this whole drum beat okay. and start just messing it up and getting a bit crazy. All so right. here's our dry sound. 
let's add a bit of chorus and start degrading this and sort of messing around with it a bit. Yeah, okay. So we're getting that cool spinning chorusy effect. Just nice for messing with the groove. Yeah. Maybe adding on a breakdown. So that's the depth, because we've got the depth on the modulation. Uh... Yeah, so we've got modulation depth. Yeah. That we're tweaking okay. here. Okay, and there's, it's got like a, and then we can a fixed parameter, yeah. Use the intensity here and kind of, which means it's a nice thing to kind of maybe drop in to just like mess with a little drum break on a breakdown or something. Yeah, yeah. So that's one simple little uh, way we can use it. Let's take a little look at um, where the distortion algorithms and just have a look at how we can like really, really break this up, destroy yeah, this drum cool. beat. Okay, so that's it. we're gonna go into this H9 list here. So yeah. as we've said, the um, a lot of the other um, sounds in the H9 are, uh, come from previous even yeah, yeah, gear. Yeah, yeah. Um, these H9 ones are a few that are fresh, uh, fresh for yeah. for this. So we're gonna go into the crush station selection here. Um, Let's go with the steamed by beer uh, preset, which is quite a cool one. Yes. And what this is going to do, basically, uh, is if you listen, we're going to absolutely destroy this. Go for it. I like so, the sound of this. Straight away. Yeah. And what we can do okay. is bring in this cool little rhythmic effect. Yeah. Now, one thing we haven't looked at yet. Let's turn this up a little bit. So that uh, crush station, crush station. It's really difficult to <laughs> yeah. say that. Uh, one thing I will say about that uh, preset is, so the crush station sound that yes. we just uh, played with on there, we're going to continue playing with that, with that for a second because we're going to show one cool thing that works better on the phone than it does on the screen um, is the fact that we can use an XY pad to get a bit of extra okay. control going on. Yeah. So we're uh, now controlling the H9 with my phone rather than with the Mac. Uh, let's have our sound. Which again, same sort of controls. We're gonna activate it on here. Now we're in. So we're activated. Yeah. We've got our same thing. And if we bring up this XY pad here, uh, so like with the um, hot knob param macro parameters or the um, macros that we've been using on the desktop, yeah. we can use this XY pad to basically uh, add some expression and yeah, play yeah, around yeah, with cool. a couple of different parameters at once. So that's that sound. So we can get this yeah, cool yeah, yeah. rhythmic gating going on. Yeah. And it's got drive, more drive on there. Yeah. So it's a cool way to add expression and, and also tweak sounds in a more tactile way. The wonderful technology that we have in phones nowadays, you can utilize the accelerometers. Yep, you can. To uh, do all that business. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. So you can just be all. Just literally just do it with gestures like that. Yeah. Which is oh, a really cool thing, particularly if you're performing live. Yeah. Get more animated. It's not all about the knob. You know what I mean? You can get all that on. I like it. It's yeah. a cool little, uh, another little cool way. So yeah. between this, the hot knob, the um, the app itself, the expression pedal, there's a lot of cool ways yeah. that we can start uh, yeah, you can messing around and adding expression to some sounds. All, all at once, yeah. Like so that. let's take a look at one more uh, thing we can do with this drum machine. Great. Right then, Si, we're sticking with the uh, TR8 again, but there's some wiring difference going on here. Talk us through what you've done. Yeah, so uh, the last couple of demos, we were just taking everything out of uh, the main outputs of the TR8, yeah. just processing the whole beat. What we're going to do now is we've got our uh, clap sound, mm -hmm. which is just going um, which is going out of a separate output. Okay. So we've got the, the main body of our beat, which is going straight into our interface, and then we're going to process just the clap using the H9 and do some okay. cool things to just that one drum sound. All right, okay. So. Cool, so there's our beat again. Yeah. Um, and so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just process just that clap sound. Um, what we've got is we've got a resonator here, which is another of the H9 algorithms. Mm -hmm. um, so we can use that resonate, resonator to add a cool pitched effect yeah, cool. just to the cool. clap. So that's it dry. Nice, just, yeah. Just the clap. So we've got this cool pitch thing coming through on the claps. And we can use our macro controls here. What this is doing is it's shifting the pitch of the resonators. Oh, nice, yeah. And also you've got a ton of other like um, effects to This reverb here, which we can add, which is really nice. Yeah, cool. And there's the resonance and the feedback. And then yeah. Yeah, so we can 
mess with rhythmic things as well. Really mess with it rhythmically as well. So basically, you can yeah, you can just feed one one part of the um, so, yeah. drum, drum track straight in there. Yeah, that's a cool way we can just mess up with one drum sound. Again, yeah. it's another cool thing we can do just to like mess with the beat that we could do in the studio or live. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just get rid of the TR8 and we're gonna look at one more setup, um, basically just using the H9 with just the laptop production sound. Oh, okay, right, we're going in the box. Yep. Righto. Okay, so I, we've we've dispensed with all the hardware. We're we're fully in the box to to sort of breathe life into a soft synth. Yeah, so obviously, as we've been looking at, um, the H9 can be really cool for processing like proper instruments, analog yeah. hardware, yeah. or drum machines, or things like that. Yeah. But, even if you're just a completely in the box producer, it's still a really cool yeah. source of um, of creative sounds, and yeah. something that you can use to add a bit of expression and get hands on with the music, without having to um, have kind of you know a massive rack set up. You can obviously yeah. see we've just got a MacBook and we've got the H9 and we've got a little interface tucked That's onto it. the table that you yeah. can't see. Um, but and yeah, that is all we've got going on. So what we're going to do here mm -hmm. is we're going to take a really really basic soft synth sound because um, obviously the last few sounds we've been using. So the the Mini Brute is a great synth on its own. Uh, the TR8 is a cool drum machine. Yeah. So the things sound good. We're gonna take the most basic sound mm -hmm. um, in mono and we're going to show how the H9 can turn something really simple into something much more interesting. Quite so, huge and massive, hopefully. Yeah, so this is our sound we've got here. It's a really basic chord progression and we're using analog uh, in Ableton Live, which is their kind of simple uh, virtual analog synth. Yeah, we've yeah. basically just got the initialized preset. All I've done, literally the only thing I've done here is I've turned the filter down a little bit. Okay. And we've got this. Right, yeah, dead basic. Yeah, cool progression. really turn it up a little bit. Not that much. Um, really, really basic chord progression. Yeah. Not a lot going on at all. So what's happening with the, the, the wiring here? How have you so, got your IO? So what we're going to do so, is we've got an audio, external audio um, device in live. Yeah. Um, we're pumping it out on a single mono channel. Um, and then we're going to take the uh, uh, outputs from the H9 stereo in to Back in just... There breathe life into this really dull and boring sound. Yeah, so yeah. we're gonna turn on uh, our external audio effect now, okay. and then we're gonna jump over to our H9 control and have a look at what's going right on right there. Cool. So we are now in the H9 control app. It's got the pitch factor open. Yeah, so we are using the pitch factor. Obviously one of the things that the H9 and all the algorithms in it are known for are these cool uh, pitch shifty things, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. where you can create harmonies from just yeah. a single sound and stuff. So let's have a little play. Uh, what we've got here is um, it's, a chord, it's using pitch factor as a sort of arpeggiator. Okay. So basically we're gonna turn that simple chord progression into some cool yeah. kind of RP thing. So let's um, just hit play in live. So that's our basic sound. Yeah. And Activate it. Okay, and we can so really, really instantly. mess. Yeah, you've, you've just made like, it's just far more interesting and way more complex. And we can play around with these, these filters. And the rhythm of this arp. We've also got this cool sequence of view here. Okay, so where got, we there's, can, there's two sequences on each one, so yeah, you can design So each. we can basically use this to design sequences and play around. So you can get really creative. Yeah, it's yeah. It's a totally. really cool way You've to just so turn much control over. Uh, a simple sound like that yeah. into something a bit more crazy and a bit all over the place. Yeah. So let's have a look at another cool sound that we can use to transform. Brilliant. Um, so let's start. Our basic sound again. again. Dry, really boring sound. Still in the pitch factor. Yeah, this is uh, from the crystal set of um, the crystal set of sounds, okay. which are some of my favourite sounds in here. They're really cool for just doing mad, ambient, all over the yeah, place yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. So Little stock and trade right yeah. there. Just listen. How we're just really 
creating something cool and ambient and weird out of that just nothing sound that we started with. It's just reversing reverbs. Yeah, we've got kind of reverse reverbs with some sort of pitch things going on as well. Really crank up the delay. Yeah. Just turn it into this kind of whole big washy soundscape, which just sounds absolutely lush. Studio, it's amazing. It's small. It's nice and compact. Yeah. Live, it's brilliant for the same reason. And you know, you've got some great sort of like uh, control on top of the interface there but and with you know with the ios and the yeah and we've been looking at it as, as an electronic music thing but yeah. obviously um we it's great for guitars as well yeah. it's, it's a popular thing with guitarists um yeah. put a guitar through there put bass there again we haven't looked at vocals like it's uh, a great tool for doing cool mm. pitch things with vocals and harmonies and stuff yeah it's great for guitarists obviously we touched on at the start it's um that even tied pedals are popular with guitars. Yeah. They're good for those kind of bread and butter sounds. It's a really cool studio tool though as well. I mm. mean, we've been using Tap Tempo to sync stuff. You've got MIDI um, yeah, here, yeah. so we could use that. So much Obviously we've there. got connect, uh, connectivity on the back. We've got the USB to hook up to a computer for the control. Mm -hmm. um, we can use the control app, which runs on uh, iOS, Android, it's and Bluetooth. on desktop. Yeah. Uh, yeah, via Bluetooth yeah. or via the USB connection mm -hmm. we're using there. So it's really flexible, it's a great studio tool. It's expandable as well, as we said, there's a few different ways you can pick up the H9 from the core version, which um, has, uh, I think, 25 presets um, in it, to the maxed out uh, all sing and all dancing version, which yeah. has 500 presets, and you can add to um, the basic version you by just buying extra algorithms, yeah, yeah, which you can yeah, do through yeah. the app, yeah. Yeah. or okay. you can do online. Right. So it's cool, it's expandable, expandable, it's flexible. You can get thousands of pounds worth of kind of classic studio sounds and pedal sounds and more yeah. all in this one box a lot of electronic history yeah is is kind of distilled and, and yeah sort yeah of so it's great it's cool. into it's an inspiring uh, inspiring thing mm. to um if you just don't know what you want to do in the studio and you just want to take the most basic sound and stick it through yeah a few presets to just see what happens and their interface very much lends it's itself cool. to sort of you can do a lot of presets. Just, surfing, yeah, surf through, mess around, yeah. see what happens, see if you can inspire yeah. something. And then you can so, dive in a bit more yeah. if you want to. So, so for so. that, it is great. We it is like great. It. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so be sure to like, subscribe, comment and share if you're seeing this video right now. Um, check out musicradar.com for all the latest news, reviews and tutorials. And of course, Future Music Magazine is on sale now, so go out and get a copy now. Cheers. Thanks.